Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit about um, how you do a e new export format for Builder. Um, I, so first off, the actual GitHub page is on github.com admc SE Builder. Um, obviously, if you go to scbuilder.com, then, then it tells you this, and then you click agree, and then there you go. And it tells you about uh, Builder, and uh, you can get to the GitHub from there and do information about it from there. And uh, once you're here on the GitHub, uh, you can look at the code, and there's also some wiki pages. Um, one of those wiki pages, which is the one we're currently interested in, is Contribution Notes. And here I've been uh, writing some stuff about how to actually get started um, with hacking around on Builder. So um, it's hosted on Git. So if you're familiar with Git, um, you just clone the um, Git repo. If you're not familiar with Git and uh, you actually want to hack Builder and not spend you know, a few hours uh, reading up on how Git works first, um, there is actually just a link on the GitHub page um, to download the whole thing as a zip. And obviously, then it's not integrated with uh, version control or anything like that. You'll have to do that yourself. But on the plus side, you know, that's really easy. So once you've got that code, the other thing which you really need to do is that um, you need to set up Firefox that it recognizes the code in that repository as a Firefox extension. Um, obviously, if you distribute the Firefox extension, it comes into an, in an XPI, uh, which is all nice and good, but you don't want to have to repackage that XPI each time you make some kind of change to make something go slightly to the left. Um, so there's this slightly obscure way you can directly hook in a folder uh, into Firefox and have Firefox treat this as an extension like any other. And the way you do that is that you go to your Firefox profile folder and you create a text file in the extensions folder in there, in your, in your profile. Uh, that's called seleniumbuilder at sourcelabs.com. And that should just contain a single line which points to the Selenium Builder folder inside that repo. And you, rest you do that, you restart Firefox, and you're there. So uh, how about I actually do that? Um, so, I have to go into library, application support. Depending on what operating system you're using, this is wildly different. Um, so, here's a link which will tell you how to find that profile folder. Um, but if you're on the Mac, it's libraries, uh, library application support, Firefox, profiles, and there should be one which ends with dot .default which is the one you'll actually see unless you set up something in an unusual way. And then uh, there's your extensions. So I actually have an old version in here, which I'm going to delete. And then let's create that file. So that file should have, in my case, this path. Ta-da. And then we need to put it into library. Application support. It's uh, specifically the uh, Selenium Builder folder. So it's one in yeah. from uh, the root. The root also contains documentation and stuff like that. And yeah, the important thing is that it has to be called exactly Selenium Builder at sourcelabs.com, because otherwise um, Firefox, Firefox gets confused. Let's do that. Doink. Now turn off Firefox. Turn it back on. And hopefully, if you're going to about Add-ons. That's right. That's exactly what it should look like. That man's screen is how it should look like. So it's going to tell you, um, oh, there's this new plugin. Uh, should I actually install it? Don't 
OK, so now it's working on my machine. And that's how you actually hook it up. And then you just start up by going into Tools and saying Lawn C Builder. And there it is. So that's how you actually get a development version of it running on your own machine. And um, then you can look at the code and hack around in it. So if we go into Projects, C Builder. So inside Selenium Builder, there's all kinds of different uh, folders. Most of them are part of uh, the infrastructure of a Firefox plugin. And because uh, it's basically a, a hollow shell of Firefox plugin in which there is a lot of uh, JavaScript, um, at the moment I have to admit the location of the actual code that actually matters is kind of weird. Um, specifically, you have to go into Chrome Content HTML, and that's where you find the actual code. Um, all the other stuff is just um, scaffolding. And in there, if you go into JS and into Builder, there is, a, there is the actual Builder code. And then inside there, there is Selenium 2. It's in folder, and there's IO. And then finally, there's uh, the Formats folder. And so that's the location where there are formatters. So for example, this is the code for uh, exporting a Python script from, uh, from Builder. And um, the way you do that, I mean, obviously, the way you do it, actually, is that you save a copy of it and you start hacking around. That's, that's how uh, Adam did the node uh, integration. He just took uh, the Python integration, copied it, and started replacing all the bits that were Python-y with bits that were node-y. And eventually, you know, it was a, it was a node exporter instead. Uh, in the long run, I'm going to try and put up a kind of... Um, a kind of stub version of this with some explanation, so that will be easier again. Um, so you call this function called create lang formatter, which takes the information you give it and it actually produces uh, the functionality for doing the formatting. So it tries to do a lot of the work for um, actually composing all of this stuff for you, and you pretty much supply it with a bunch of strings. So you have to tell it, you know, what's the name of the formatter? What's the extension of the files it produces? Now, and then you have to start telling it about the particular language. So how do you say not? In Python, you say not, right? In uh, Java or in JavaScript or something, you have an exclamation mark. Um, then you have start, which is just going to be pasted in at the top of every script. That's basically how do you create web driver? And end, that gets pasted in at the end. How do you, you know close it down, closing braces, uh, things like that. And then the meat of it is just a big mapping of um, different types, the names of different step types in Selenium 2, and uh, the line that should result from it. So in this case, you've got Python, you've got a get step. And what should that do? Well, it should call webdriver.get with the URL. And so one of the things you can see there is that we've got a little, little syntax going on for doing string substitution. So if you put something into curly braces, what that means is uh, please substitute it with that, with that parameter in that step. So please substitute that with the actual URL that this get step has. And uh, if you have locators, then the way it works is that you can ask for the locator, which is actually the, uh, say, the XPath or the ID or something like that. And then you have something called the locator by, um, that's actually a bit Java specific how I call that, um, which is how you tell that language to use that locator. So in Python's case, um, and, and, there's, and then there's a way of uh, mapping what a particular type of locator should look like in a particular language. So in Python's case, for example, if you're looking at uh, a locator by ID, you have to call find element by ID. Or in Java, it's done completely differently. In Node, it's done completely differently again. So it has to be split out. Um, yeah, so it, it, it just looks up that thing and it does a bunch of substitution to actually do the string substitution. It chains together these, uh, chains together these 
pieces of text. Then there's some other uh, functions which you want to define. You want to define how do you escape a value um, because, you know, usually it's a string and you want to quote the string somehow. How do you quote the string in this language using single quotes, double quotes? What kind of escaping rules does it have? Uh, it's mostly standard, but uh, not always entirely standard. And then finally, there's some stuff which I'm probably not going to get into because it's kind of slightly hairy. Um, you can store and retrieve values um, using commands in Selenium 2. You can do that in Selenium 1, and that's part of the infrastructure. In Selenium 2 web driver, it's not part of the infrastructure because, hey, it's code, you know, code has variables. But so we've put in steps for actually being able to store and load data into Selenium 2. And uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you need to do to actually generate variable assignments within, uh, within the output code. So I can give you an example of that, hopefully. Um, so let's. Ooh, let's just start recording here. That sounds like fun. So we're just recording this. And we're saying, OK, but we go there. And then let's make a new step. And what we want to do is we want to store, say, the title of the current, uh, we want to store the title of the current page into the variable. Oh, let's call it title. How about that, right? And then. Um, we want to assert that um, the title, oh, let's assert that the title is the title, right? That's really, it's an important test, right? We wouldn't want that to go wrong. Where would we be then? <laughs> and uh, so here, if I remember correctly, the syntax to do this, which is, should be the same one as in Selenium 1, if I remember. Um, so that, again, does variable substitution in, um, in the actual playback. So. It won't actually check, is it dollar title or say, you know, is it the title we've just stored? So it says, yeah, yeah, it, the title's still the title. And, uh, oh, let's negate that. Right, so we want to check, you know, is the title not the title? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that fails. Yeah, I know. And then let's save that to disk. Okay, let's not save that to disk. Awesome, we've reached the point where the demo is broken, guys. <laughs> Excellent, I, I like that. Okay, I don't know why that's broken, but let's just boot up the whole thing. I'm just going to use, oh, so another thing which you can actually do, which is quite nice in Firefox, is that you can tell it to launch with a custom profile. Um, which is, um, you do it like that, you actually, in the command line, you actually call the Firefox binary, and you give it minus P, and then the name of the um, profile which you want to use. And that means that you can have a development profile which can be full of all kinds of half-baked, unstable stuff, and you can still use Firefox as a normal web browser without uh, that actually hurting. Okay, so let's just try this again, right? So let's recall on here. Stop. Stop below. Stop. Stop title. Ah, this time it works. Okay, so let's export it to Java. Could you explain when you went to export it why it said it could not be exported to Python? Yeah, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you look in the uh, Python, in that mapping um, called um, line for type, if you look for store title, it's not there. So uh, I just haven't put that in yet. But if you go into Java, you look for store title, and uh, there it is. So maybe you could implement it real quick in Python. 
Um, no, because the, uh, the whole stuff about actually doing variables isn't in, in Python yet. So that, that's, that's quite a bit of work yet. Sorry. Um, okay, so I'm just going to show you what the, um, what the resulting Java looks like. So uh, this is the Java you get out. And uh, so it's done some clever stuff to actually create a variable assignment out of this code. Okay. So, no, actually, let, let's have a look. So, let's, yeah, let, you're right, let's try it. It can only go horribly wrong, right? Let's try to store the title. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's just attach it onto here. Say, store title. And now, um, do, do, do. Okay, and the way of getting that is wd.title. So, it should just really be free. Let's try that. That seems similar to what it should be. Okay, so it's found it. Only question is, will it produce actual Python? Title is closed. That's nearly right. <laughs> Just made one tiny mistake, which is that I forgot the new line. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So it is actually pretty easy to add new stuff. I'm going to save this as builder. Because hey, I don't want to have to keep on re-entering it uh, each iteration. So, right. Ooh. We've uh, successfully implemented store title. Um, yeah, so um, so you, you can you can do that kind of stuff. Um, how are we for time? Um, hmm? Eight minutes. Okay. So I've just kind of done a quick. You know, this is how you kind of get started. Um, do you have questions? Would you like to see something in particular? Yeah. Very good point. Okay. Okay, so let's, you know what, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to do a thing um, which we talked about, um, which is that um, wouldn't it be great if you could actually export this to natural language instructions, right? Okay, this is a silly thing, but let's do it. Um, good. I'm going to do it into German, right? So... Uh, you can you can you can just export this stuff into German afterwards. So let's take Yeah, I'm, I'm about to get to that, don't I? Um, so, 
Let's create a new format. It's called German. Right. Let's just paste in the Python for now. And now, yeah, the question is, how do you actually tell Bill that this file is there? And the answer is there's a file called loader.js. And uh, that's the file that gets called at the start of the whole thing. And that's the file that loads in all, all of the JavaScript files. And so um, if you create a new format right now, you add it as a line. In the long run, obviously, um, what we really want to do is to have an actual plugin system where you don't have to do that. You just give it a file or you have some UI or something like that. Right now, this is how you do it. Um, so the moment you've got that in, it will actually load that in. So if we try this. Uh, now it gives us two Pythons, right, because I haven't changed anything about that file. So, German. Or wouldn't it be .de? It's a good, well, okay, okay, dot .de dot .txt, right? And then something like nicht. Uh, okay, so how do we start? There could be the space after nicht. Yeah, I guess. I guess we start by just saying, bitte. You know, please, you know, please do that stuff. And then I, I'm really not going to implement like all of this stuff. What, and what would you do at the end though? Feeling dunk? Yeah, feeling dunk. Absolutely, you're right. So at the end of it, let's just be really polite and say feeling dunk. Okay. So I'm just going to implement one, one step type, right? Um, get. That's been um, gehen Sie bitte nach. Something like that, right? Um, all this locator stuff, well, we don't know yet. So I'm just going to return that straight out. How do you escape valley? In German, uh, well, I don't think German does backslash escaping as far as I'm aware. So I'm just going to say, um, let's just wrap it into there. Right. So uh, hopefully this should work. German. We can export it to German. Right. So, you know, we, we can... I, I'm really sorry, actually, because I, you know, Source Labs, I mean, you, we, don't, we don't need you now. We don't need uh, all of this architecture. Uh, we, we just use some people in Germany, and we just send them these files, and you say, hey, hey, guys, bitte gehen Sie... Bitte, gehen Sie bitte zu http www.sabuilder.com. Vielen Dank. Okay. Um. <laughs> You're right. Um, yeah, I don't speak... Yeah, you're right. I don't speak Russian. If there's any Russian speakers, then, you know, please, please come up and we'll do Russian too. So, yeah, I mean, this is, this is obviously a kind of a silly, facile example, but the point is it took me all of, like, uh, three minutes to do this. And uh, I chose German just because then I wouldn't have to bore you with me looking up how do you do Ruby syntax or things like that. Um, if you know Ruby syntax really well, it's probably just as fast, right? Um, yeah. And so, do you have to, I mean, with the, with the bit, mm -hmm. you, do you have to do that for every single thing? You, you obviously just implemented get there, but you have to do that for every single thing. There's no way of shortcutting it with the asserts and, and that sort of stuff. Because obviously, the structure mm. for an assert is going to be yeah. across whatever you're asserting. 
Yeah, so um, you don't have to use this method because actually what, you, what an exporter really looks like is uh, it just has the name, the extension, one big function called format, and uh, a, list of, um, a list of things which you can't export yet. And so the exporter to JSON, because JSON is such a direct mapping, doesn't use all this other mechanism, it just does that. So what you can do is instead of calling the, um, instead of creating create lang formatter, you can um, either just not use it at all, or what you can do is you can use it, uh, but then you can selectively override it, you can wrap it in something. So that would be a, that would be a nice thing to do. Um, and I think I think in the long run, um, in the long run, there's probably more details left. Right now, you can either do all the work or have a pretty narrow way of doing it, and hopefully, we'll be able to have kind of more steps in between that. Because it pretty much depends on how uh, weird and exotic your uh, language is. If it's really straightforward, then you can probably get away with very little code. If it's kind of unusual and does things in a non-standard way, you need the power to do it in a non-standard way. So yeah. But you're right, I mean, it's going to be very uh, samey across a lot of things. Cool. Yeah, so please, you know, please try it out. Um, if you hit any hitches, send, send me or send Adam an email. Um, a mailing list. Yeah, actually, there is a mailing list. Adam makes a wonderful and perfect point. There is a mailing list, and it is... It should be a link at the top. should be a link at the top. Ah, it's, it's reorganized things. Yeah, there's a LinkedIn mailing list. Usually when you have a screen that's a normal size, uh, it, uh, it just turns up on top there. So yeah, in the top bar, link to the mailing list. We're both on it. And uh, we'll try to answer questions as quickly as possible. And yeah, I mean, really do free, feel free to just send us some code and say, oh, why is this not working? And we'll, we'll look at the code and, uh, and figure it out. Um, because, yeah, uh, the more exporters we get, the more options you have for actually using this stuff. So we really want to put them all out there uh, for absolutely everything. Okay. Um, any other questions about the uh, process? No? Uh, one question. Yeah. So you, the, um, the pause not and neg not um, keys or variables or whatever? Oh, right, yeah. That's a really good point. Okay, so if, bring it up? yeah, I shall. So if we go into Python again, I think, pos not and neg not, right? So the point is that, um, okay, so one, 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 one thing about um, Selenium 2 steps is that some of them are negatable because uh, Selenium 1, tend to have is element visible, is element not visible, and it's a huge duplication. So for Selenium 2, which is, well, some things you can just negate, right? So it's just a Boolean flag, and it means please assert or verify the opposite. And that then means that you need to be able to, you know, strategically put in negation into your code. And so POSNOT means um, in the normal case, if it's not negated, please put a negation in there. NEGNOT means in the normal, in the case where it is negated, put in an exclamation mark. So, verify page source. Um, it says, if the uh, if the source, if the page source isn't the um, actually that's probably broken. How about that? There. So, if the page source isn't the source as as we've got it as a parameter, print the error message. But, of course, if it's negated, if you want to say the source shouldn't be like that, then we print an error message if it is the same. And so that's just a way of, uh, of making sure you don't get that kind of duplication, you don't have to do everything twice. So that's actually kind of a start of the kind of things you talked about, of being able to compose things. And I think it would be really great to see how much support for composition you can make so you can uh, have a relatively small toolkit of... Uh, things which can just combine together uh, this kind of stuff. Okay, does that, does that make sense?
Yes, yeah. I'd like to make not an array so I can choose different variants of not. Okay, right. Depending on this on the particular type of the Okay, good. Um, I'll make it. Um, I'll enter a bug right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We uh, fun fun fact. Um, if you go onto GitHub, of course, on GitHub, um, there's an issue tracker. It's currently empty, and I'm sure there are actual issues. So please go in there and you know put in enhancement requests, put in bugs, put in whatever, and uh, we can kind of get going with uh, adding more stuff to this. Um, anything else? Okay, I think, I think we're done. So yeah, I mean, catch me afterwards if you want to ask more details or if you want to look at the code more closely um, or if you want to tell me you should do it like this instead. I'm very happy to listen. And yeah, thank you all for listening.